what is good? We're back and a fresh crack, ready to roll. You gonna crack it or what? Bang. All right, we got our first week of NFL preseason underneath our belts here. We got real actual football being played. Take with, with it from it what you will, um, you know. Read between the lines. A lot of it is confirmation bias at this point. You're you're confirming what you liked, and you're you're disagreeing with what you saw, and how you can disprove it. It's not real. Um, you know, you kind of like I said, you got to take some of this with a grain of salt. It's mostly out there, seeing how these guys are moving around, seeing what they're doing. Some of the playing with the first team matters. Some mm. of it doesn't really. You know, who got snaps where and when. Some of it may matter, some of it not. I think all coaches play it a little bit differently. You give a veteran guy the start, or you give a guy who was good in practice that week a start, and next week you could see something totally different. So, you know, you don't want to really overreact to anything too strongly here, but it's good to see the guys back out there. Uh, most most everybody staying healthy. Uh, some starters playing a little longer than others. Guys that you need to get, gather, that teams need to gather a little more information on. Um, so we're going to talk about some of the good that we saw some of the bad that we saw and and kind of some of of what we thought some things meant uh this is a lot like astrology at this point uh <laughs> you know everybody knows that one girl that you slept with just because and you're like yeah i'm totally that's totally a leo thing you know yeah <laughs> no i i say yeah so but good. i don't i don't know we've been down this road before but anyway I know way more about football than I do astrology. <laughs> sure. So good, you're in good hands. We're going to start with the Niners Raiders. But first, before we uh, came on, we had a, a few signings go down today. We had Ramondre signing, getting a little uh, getting bump. signed on. Getting signed on uh, with, with some Zeke action. Details of that contract. I haven't seen details for either contract yet. Six million for one year. We've got to be incentivized. Yeah, it, sure, says up, but, it said up to six right, million. Right. So, you know, I, I don't know what that means. Uh, and then. Dalvin gets, I, I think, up to eight Sounded million. Like a, yeah. Um, so we can start on the Dalvin side. This seemed like what the if it was a betting favorite. I think the Jets were the betting favorite to to land Dalvin Cook. Smoke and fire. Um, I thought maybe he would land in Miami, being a Miami guy, and I thought Dallas was the uh, was the real dark horse. Dark horse that I thought could really happen because I, I think they, I think, in my opinion, I think they really should should bring somebody else in uh, but maybe they're going so far the other way that like we're just any any rb on the 53 <laughs> where's my pig um so dalvin hall what, what do you what do you think the value is there on on either one of those i haven't been able to place a good value on dalvin yet in dynasty redraft wise um i don't think i've done enough drafts to get enough reps in I feel like there's been some little bit of fourth round breeze going around in, in redraft. Um, is that is that something that you're interested in now at this point? Or it has to curb your appeal some in redraft, of course. I have Dalvin on a dynasty team, and it makes I've been wanting him to sign somewhere enticing. Then I could trade him, but I the Jets sounds like an enticing place, but with Brees there, it definitely hurts both their value. I feel like I don't if he just signed with Miami, I'd have better trade leverage in trying to ship Dalvin out but then I'd also be a little intrigued about him being in Miami but obviously that didn't happen so right. he's in New York still a good situation luxury pick for them yeah I think and I definitely would have liked the Miami thing better for Dalvin don't overall. think it affects too much for me with Brees in Dynasty yeah. like I still it, maybe this maybe this will create a discount for him send the uh, Brees all uh, trades out and it's like dude no, there's there somebody might sell you Brees hall it's still going to be real expensive um and there may be a few leagues where hey i'm mocking them if you want to send a trade send a trade but um you know as soon as anything happens that's always what twitter goes to buy the dip uh you know i don't know how much dip there's going to be in Brees hall for Dynasty. maybe not initially right yeah. now but you could have been the injury and all this talk about how bad running backs are and you could sure, be but, souring but, but, a little uh, but bit but i'm saying like i don't think anybody's selling you for a penny they shouldn't the be you're, they absolutely should not be i think in 95 percent of cases he's going to be valued as as the second or third rb overall and for dalvin signing for a year which this is what the jets probably should have done i, I do like where their backfield is right now you know Abana Kanda showing a little bit of life in the preseason. Uh, Michael Carter was pretty good in this last game, and Michael Carter's had good stretches. Um, you know, I, I think they could have got by without doing so, but Aaron Rodgers gives uh, 
give some money back, a charitable mm-hmm. donation. So mm-hmm. uh, you, you get Aaron. So you do what you can to win. And now, you know, if if you don't like what you're getting from Izzy or Bam Knight or uh, Michael Carter or whoever you got on that, you, you now have a, a plan to be able to just, hey, we can do whatever we need to do with Brees. We can we can give Brees, you know, a few carries here, a few carries there. Maybe by middle of the season, they're splitting carries, but we don't have to. How much um, time you got, buddy? Right. All the time now. Right. You got all the time in the world. Um, so I, I think it's a smart move. And, I, you know, some people are saying Dalvin's washed. I think Dalvin's going to be just fine on this team. Now, offensive line-wise, that's probably the biggest question of the Jets. Um, you know, can they hold up? Can Can... Uh, Beckton, you know, be on the field. How how are they going to fare offensive line wise? That's really all you hear about. I think everything else you feel pretty good about. This is obviously instant reaction, so I don't exactly know where I'd throw Dalvin Cook. Um, I think the Brees owner uh, may, maybe could potentially be your best bet to sell Dalvin right now if you want to sell Dalvin. I don't know that it really opened up this giant sell window, but at least he's like attached to something now. So yeah. there's like. It, it increased his value a schmidge. Right. Not the most that it could had he not gone somewhere with a running back as predominant as Brees. But there'll be other doors. If anything comes out about Brees' recovery, all it takes is them coming, bringing him back slow. You know, everybody will be like, well, you know, I told you. You know, they're going to be mad at him because he might. They yeah. don't have to rush him now. They right. can ease him in. Now, now, Dalvin's got a lot to learn. You know, Dalvin is like. You act like a guy coming in is just going to, you know, he's he, he's got a learning curve here too, and they do have a bunch of depth. I think you're still sitting on Dalvin. I think you still got to sit on Dalvin for the time being. Yeah, I mean, you, if yeah. you're trying to move him. I, you're in a pretty tough situation there if you still have Dalvin on your roster. to you, you know, you could probably get pennies on the dollar for him, maybe to the Brees owner, maybe not. You know, maybe maybe you could fish some sort of a two, three swap with, with a Brees owner. I just don't know that Dalvin's worth anything. I believe in a half point PPR league, uh, we sold Dalvin at the end of the season for a first for a, for next a, year, next year's first. So down the line. So I think that was about as good as you could do. And I think, you know, if you got that, you had to have gotten a little lucky to even get that from the right mm-hmm. person, but it just, you know, I'm, I'm talking a little bit of shit, but you know, it just, it does go to show you, you know, if you if you're persistent about it and you find the right person, you, you can kind of make something happen. Um, redraft wise, Dalvin Cook, I, it's it's probably not all that interesting. Although it's going to be cost based. Uh, if if he stays down in the seventh eighth round, maybe he's worth it. But you know, I, I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure. I, it just it seems like it's probably something that I'm not would would most likely stay away from in in redraft for the most part. Um, yeah, there's so. really there's so many there's so few roster spots in redraft that I just can't right. I haven't taken him. But everybody could feel the same way and it could get pushed and then it's a you know that's all about sure. just where where he is. Sure, and, and absolutely. What it is. He's a great RB three four stab if he waited and and he hangs around. I'm trying to pull up some drafts here, but I know I've been passing on him just to see where he would go. Uh, I found our most recent one. Let's see where he went. So yeah, I mean I believe it, maybe seventh round. Six nine. Six nine. So you know, I don't I don't know if I want Brees or uh, Dalvin at, at six nine at that point. Like I just feel like right after Javonta Williams, right in front of Swift. Rashad I feel like White, even even to start brother. the season, I you know, I don't even know if you're gonna see Dalvin with twenty carries to start the season, you know? Mm-hmm. It, but you can maybe maybe you will though. Maybe maybe it'll be four or five games where it's just heavy Dalvin and you know, if Rogers likes what's going on with Dalvin and, and what they're doing, I think he's going to have a decent amount of say in what goes on. I, I think Brees is undeniable. Um, you just you got to get him right. And it's a good move for the Jets to, to slow play that. So, yeah, um, again, instant reaction. So I don't have a great deal of value uh, dialed in right here. But as we move forward, we certainly will. And then the next one would be Stevenson and Zeke. Um, this one a little less worrisome for me. Yeah, um, it didn't phase me that much either. I certainly wasn't like, oh man, it, bummer for you, Stevenson. You, yeah, I mean, but you can't you can't per- sit here and pretend like there is you know like there isn't a, a bit of a, was gonna a bummer, happen. right? You, it seemed like they were Had flirting. To. They don't know. ever want to do it anyway. They don't want to just right. They were Molly. You got to see a little thing, bit of Pierre Strong disaster, but it seems like they're not you know, and not not that Zeke. Man, if you think Dalvin's washed, then you definitely think Zeke's washed. So there's no way he's getting this incentivized money. Just sounds good in the headline, I guess. But I mean, 
They need someone else, and it, I mean, it could have been way worse than Zeke, I guess. So. Zeke's probably going to come out there and have a couple good games this year. Um, you know, with with a decent stat they line and, fall and a couple the end catches, zone. and yeah, I mean that's you know you're worried about. Uh, you he know, can pass protect and catch. And, and, right, he's an excellent pass protector. He, he can catch. I think. I think Stevenson. They have emphasized a lot this offseason. To your point, that hey, we want to keep we want to keep uh, Ramondre fresh, fresh as we can. Uh, we don't we don't want to use him quite as much as as maybe we did in, at points last year. So Zeke gives you an option. Your other options were you know, uh, Fournette, the dude, the dude from uh, well, I was was already the, there. I was saying on the roster. Oh. Um, uh, um, Kevin Harris, Kevin Harris from from and the Pierre Gamecocks Strong era. and Pierre Strong, um, and and you know they they obviously weren't settled in on where those guys are at right now, mm-hmm. and they've been they've been you know snooping around uh, <laughs> with with a lot of. Different I would have swore the the Fournette signed with them. I didn't know that it was just a visit. Yeah, back when the blurb. Well, it's just like Kareem. Everyone lost mm-hmm. their mind because Kareem Hunt signed with the Saints, and then it's like he's still taking visits. Um, and maybe he does now that that uh, Kendra does have a little. Uh, knee sprain uh, but so we shall see but you know Stevenson Zeke doesn't affect me as much it, it makes me you know maybe maybe drop Stevenson inside my tier a hair um, but I don't think I'm dropping him out of the tier that I have that I had him ranked in on the dynasty show redraft wise um, I don't remember exactly where he was was going redraft in the last mock that we did I bet it's it's third round, it's late third. So right before Brees at three ten, Brees went three eleven. Aaron Jones. I bet both of those guys drop a little bit because I think you will. And Ramondre didn't have a huge TD, um, huge TDs amount. Last I think it was five for uh, Ramondre on on the season. And that's what maybe you were hoping was going up. But the target five. share was was one re- receiving. The target share was really good. The yards per route run were outstanding. He was up near the top with that. I don't think you're going to have to worry about Zeke really eating into those kind of plays for Ramondre, which is is I think that's good. Sixty nine receptions. Um, so I think I think that number will stay strong. I think he's a really good player, um, and it's also not where you know it's not Aaron Rodgers and the Jets. It's uh, Bill Belichick and the Patriots here. Um, so you know you, it's not kind of it's not the same thing. Like if Dalvin's really working because you're having somebody coming back from an injury, maybe maybe Brees gets you know even slow played even further uh, down the line. Whereas I think this is depth. You need a depth. You need somebody who can come in and get you, you be good in the goal line, be good in short yardage and, and not just, know which and be a reliable play player. Like there's going to be games where the Patriots want to pound the ball. Um, and now we don't have to give it to Ramondre, you know, 28 times in that game. We can give it to him 18 times mm-hmm. and we can give Zeke the other and we feel okay about it. So you know, I, I think it's got to take a slight bump, but I'm not quite as devastated by this TD Vulture, Jamal Williams like uh, Zekeism could could happen uh, to the Patriots and Stevenson here. Uh, but overall, I think it's, um, you know, not the worst move for the Patriots offense. Like, again, I, I'm just I can't be that upset about it uh, for, from the Patriots standpoint. Like, again, this is what they want to do. And like you said earlier, when we started this, like, you know, they want to use uh two guys and, and i mean who who at this point in the league isn't using two guys you know the bet a lot of the best that you can hope for is like 65 35 if you get to 70 30 awesome um, right so and i think i think ramondre showed you enough last year to, to that he can be you know elite in a bunch of categories that really matter um, and mad efficient too right, that's with what the I, production yeah, and right. the receiving like he's a fantastic player he needs a little bit of help I think it's a great move for them, and it's not the worst thing for Ramondre at all. Uh, looking at him in our ADP, he he goes at four twelve. Dalvin would have, I feel like Dalvin would have been much worse. Oh, for, for him, sure. It seems 100%. like hundred percent. Like right. that's what I'm saying. Like if you think Zeke's a better fit for them, and you know, uh, yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can't pin down what, what, what play they're going to call. You know what I mean? When when Zeke's on the field, right. same thing with Ramondre. So it gives them a lot of versatility, which is what they want. You know, does this drop him down? Let's see. I, this isn't necessarily representative of your tiers. I think you got Pollard above a, a lot of the players, you know, obviously after Najee. But Kenneth Walker, Ramondre Stevenson. Oh, Ramondre still. Okay. Ramondre or Pollard? Um, uh, I think you got Pollard up there. I have Ramondre above Pollard okay. right now in the last iteration of him. It seems like... You know, redraft, I would take Pollard, uh, you know, Stevenson 
It gets a little closer in Dynasty for me, but I think Stevenson's got a year or two. Uh, met, what, how old is Ramondre? Ramondre's 25, yep. So he must have at least a year. He's got a year on him. So I feel better about Pollard right now. Uh, but again, he's never been a guy who's got all the work like that either. So, you know, there's still a few guys floating around out there. Uh, so let's let's maybe pivot to that for a second. Tony Pollard kind of a little bit of a, a, little bit of a winner here. Um, I think, you know, I thought for sure Zeke or Dalvin were, were going to end up there. Big bullets. Right. Um, I'm not as worried about Kareem Hunt going there. Lenny could be somebody that makes sense for the Cowboys for cheap. Um, and if neither of those guys get there, I mean, it's just, you know, I, I feel like they should bring in somebody like a Leonard Fournette, like a they Zeke. They must really like Malik. Who can... Davis. I, Maybe they're going so far in the other direction with the running backs that they're like <laughs> the again, second time you right. said that about the Cowboys. Right. I mean, that's just all I can come up with. Um, I think Pollard's a good player. You saw the efficiency again from him last year. Um, I've been really, really liking him this season. I was waiting for the other shoe to drop a little bit. I, even if Zeke would have went down to him or uh, to the Cowboys, I, I was I was ready to maybe drop Pollard down a hair, but I think it would have been much like a Stevenson, you know, Stevenson getting Zeke, I think would have been kind of the same thing that Pollard, uh, Zeke did to Pollard. I, I think you would, you're not going to see what you saw last year with the, with the carry distribution. I think it would be heavily weighted in Pollard's favor. And I think it still will be. So, you know, I don't think any of those, nobody signing there would, would kill Pollard's value for me, but a, but a big win, especially with a guy like Zeke, who's familiar with everything there and, you know, could get the, you know, it's a good old boy network. And, Zeke goes back there and has been a career cowboy, you know, could get a couple more carries that maybe, you know, he doesn't deserve because he's because of what he's done with the Cowboys. So I think a win for him and then and, and a win for a chain right now, I think. Yeah, um, I know. The, I know the Dolphins are down in 29 or 30 and, in, in, you know, rush rate like they don't run the ball a ton. Um, Yo, whichever running back starting for them and getting some carries though is very valuable. In, they, they, in they can they can be valuable. It's best guess of who it's going to be. Well, um, you got to hope that one of them's you got healthy. You got to because when when Monster was hurt, I was starting Jeff Wilson on a really good team. I had I was like, how can I not play Jeff yeah. Wilson? And then when when he's hurt and and Raheem's in there, you, you start him. It's, and it'll be interesting. One of those guys is going to get hurt pretty soon, and A chains probably. Well, be it'll be interesting to see that. You know, I think. I think A-Chain will probably have a role now going to this game. A-Chain didn't play with really much of the starters. They were running Gaskin out there, um, and then he came in, which, you know, I, I don't know what the hell that means. It could just be like, hey, rookie, go out here. Gaskin's gonna, probably on the bubble here. That, uh, they wanted to just get Gaskin time with the best players. But they see. brought all their guys back. They know and what they Gaskin. played Sa Sa Salvin, too. They, they uh, know what those guys are. Yeah. They brought them all. They brought the whole room back. They're like, mm -hmm. these guys are good enough. We got A-Chain. I think A-Chain's going to have his own role. So, I, you know... I think having Mostert and Wilson healthy, I think he's going to have a role regardless. And if one of those goes down, I think you'd see a slight uptick. But I don't, I don't know that how crazy it would be. At least year one, or at least first half of the season. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. But Dalvin would have been a big uh, blow to A chain, and you were kind of waiting on something to happen. Uh, so I think, that, I think it's also good for you know A chain's development. What you saw in 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 week one of the preseason or week two whatever you want to call it um was was a chain's receiving ability on on display which i never really understood why anybody was knocking his receiving ability but it didn't seem they like it seemed like there was plenty of people <clears throat> out there they who, were who weren't like you know super into yeah. his receiving ability and not calling it a you know a huge a huge uh attribute of his and I, I i thought he was a, a very good receiver for sure um, and i and i saw a little and bit i'd of almost rather have him you know in a in a fairly split role where he's got chances to to make plays um in yeah. the receiving game and in the running game you got to get him in space but what they were doing and what i saw in college in the similar results it wasn't great but they were running in between the tackles you know like right. he was he was doing that in college too and and he'll get you the three yards he'll keep you honest but you right. what you want to do is spring him and get him into space right. and get him in that passing which game, is which what that he had what, four for 41 i think so which is what this offense is it's, it's always been a good fit i think for a chain going to the dolphins and it's, the speed? It's speed on speed on right. speed um it's just what does the game to game usage look like for him and how startable is he fantasy wise because if see, he to right me he was rip, always i like, don't know i don't right. know i'm fine with that it was always to me good player fun player a lot of fun uh, perfect like 
it's taxi squad stash, which is expensive sta- taxi right. squad stash. But I mean, but shit could be depth. You could be starting this man in your zero hero he, RB. He feels like a guy that one week will will kill you, and then right. you know. Because you got him in, and then you'll bench him, and the next week he'll he'll score a long touchdown or have two TDs or one reception, one running. But shit, maybe then, four for you know, forty-one is a baseline, and right, with and, room and with, we, with the ceiling it could be Tariq Cohen. You we got to like, see. I definitely don't want to roll. Comp in. I, drink. Re- I definitely don't want to roll into week one uh, with mm-hmm. a chain in my lineup. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, he's somebody Can't in redraft who's just he- a lot of upside that could be could really help you out. And in dynasty, uh, definitely becoming more and more. Um, Putting interested f- with with f is for fun you know i liked kendra a lot but now one we're, of the we're already having some injuries with him we got kamara coming back um mm. a little earlier than than we thought uh i'll still take charbonnet over i guess H-A. you probably gotta take charbonnet because we can talk about him next but man fun taking a chain I, I i traded away some of my later first round picks and i'm a little bum because I, I could maybe have gotten a chain maybe i could take one of them early seconds to try and move up but yeah it's one quarterback. Um, True. So let's let's get to some preseason action. Let's start. Let's we'll start with one of some of the games Charbonnet? that just happened. Now we'll, we'll, we're so deep into this, it doesn't yeah. even matter. Let, let's start with Niners. Niners. Uh, oh, Raiders. Trey Lance. Um, oh, 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 I'm sure. I'm was sure it as Lance bad as is, everyone um, says? I watched it. And I, I have an opinion, but I'm curious what. Um, so there, I think there was some good there, uh, but there was there was, and it, and it happened as as he was playing which look man at the end of the day what the problem is is he hasn't played mm-hmm. like he just needs to play and and that was evident as soon as they called hike they said hut, hut. and <laughs> you know it was he was indecisive like he was double clutching balls and then he would like he'd drop his head down and then it Take was off like, a little early and, and you know maybe even walking into some pressure where he didn't need to and if like you saw when sam darnold came in that ball, it was one, two, three, bang, ball out, ball out, ball out. He's also played fucking 50 more games than Trey Lance has played. We give this guy a lot of shit, and I'm, I'm not an apologist here. Like, he was not great in that situation in, uh, Sunday there against the Raiders. He's also playing with that second unit for the offensive line was not doing him any favors, and the skill positions out there were, were not, you know, doing any favors, really. But that, that D-line, that second mix of second uh d line for the for the raiders was definitely advantage them they gave him the whole first half and at the end of the first half he made a couple of throws that that, that looked pretty good but that beginning was just indecisiveness it was it was a ton of indecisiveness and i think that just comes with he played one game in a monsoon last year and then came back in and got hurt and then the year before that he broke his finger um and had a knee injury and we would just he yeah but we, we we've waited through all of that and right. for them to come out here and, and and so i understand like been in the system and this week and, we've been and, wanting him to fail and you want to see him go also I, I could pretty much guarantee you that they're not running their full system out there on in preseason week two uh with well if the they were trying to put him normally, on display to help trade him it didn't work and right. i don't i don't know that that's what they're doing like i Me think you, i think at this point like you carry him into the season like anything could happen now and yeah l- l- let's see what happens i mean the next preseason game they should do the same thing like he should get the whole first half again yeah, yeah. like you need to let him play yeah. or if you want to give darnold the first quarter because you thought you want to reward him for maybe being a little bit better and you want to see what he can do fine with that i, I think right now he's the qb2 on your depth chart sam darnold um and lance is you know maybe slid back a little bit but i i can't crucify the guy for just he just hasn't freaking played man like he's i I don't want to call him a rookie but like he's he's got you know only a few more games under his belt now he's obviously been in the system and been around so again i don't want to be an apologist for college right one year so in one game but it was part of the problem with everybody being mad that the 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 shanahan's traded all that to get him when they shouldn't have done that. And that's a different and discussion. The biggest but outcome, the, to me, the biggest takeaway from this game, and I'm just saying why people just want to hate so hard. They just hate. I don't know if they, if he ain't popping. They, if, he, if they ain't, he ain't popping. So all the hate that Shanahan gets, that's, that's how you got to look at it. But the biggest takeaway for me was this is all very good for Brock Purdy. That was a good night for Brock Purdy. Like, right. And, 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 and no one's calling for his head. It was, no, you know, he's just sitting there like, it was also fantastic confidence. for that clown show Grant Cohen, like who's a Niners fucking just troll, 
his daddy was somebody terrible. and he's just is riding those coattails and just troll. He's supposed to be a Niners insider, Niners guy. All he does is fucking troll. It's sad we live in that kind of world. Somebody should take that man's phone away from him and just check on his well-being because he was he was saying how he just loves to knock Brock down and tells you how much Brock sucks and Trey needs to be the starter. And like, look, I get it. Like, we need to give Trey the chance. The preseason to um, get some reps. But and Brock's going right to need some reps Brock. too. But Brock deserves to start. Brock Grant, doesn't need any reps. Grant Cohen's a clown. Everybody should just stop following him, and then he would go away. I, I want to say it's his fault, but it's it's it's, it's just the Skip Bayless fault. shit. It's you guys that just keep consuming that shit. He's terrible at what he does, and he knows exactly what he's doing. Like, he shouldn't even be in this position, but Daddy got him there, so here he is. Much like most 49er fans. <laughs> Not the Daddy part, but yeah. sucking. Well, when you're... <laughs> Not when they're bad, you don't even you don't hear from them. So it's just like you know, if you're not popping, you you know. If they ain't hating, you ain't popping. You are you not so, popping. Uh, on the other side of this, you have the tail of two different teams here. You have the Raiders. You have the Niners, who have been perennially a pretty solid and anticipated team. You have the Raiders, who are coming in here kind of hungry um, and trying to prove something. And we're, we've got a lot of turnover, and we're changing stuff. So, man, Jimmy G still looking handsome though. On oh, the side, for sure. Man, and and you know, it did look like a little bit of tail of two different kind of teams where the Niners are like, we don't need to really do shit in the preseason and, and the Raiders are out here to prove some shit. Uh, but Aiden O'Connell looked really good. Like, that's what you want Trey Lance to look like. Poised, uh, delivering the ball where it needs to go in a timely manner, moving around a little bit. So I really liked what O'Connell did. Uh, that He's a nice little deep stash and deeper benches. I know, God forbid, you know, you stashed anybody who isn't uh, a top 100 <laughs> pick. Um, but you know, the game is played with more than just those players. So I liked what you saw from O'Connell. They liked what they saw from O'Connell. Um, Zamir white played, you know, pretty decent there. Um, nothing, nothing spectacular for him. For me, it's, it's, you got to get Josh Jacobs back in here at any means possible. Get, try to give that man the Saquon Barkley treatment, do whatever you need to do. Um, uh, but stay away, Raiders Josh. Won, hold out, Josh. If the no, don't do that. If the Raiders want any chance of of being good in this division and having a chance, they have to have Josh Jacobs. Figure out how to give him another million or two and give him a Saquon like deal. Have him come back for a year and then do whatever the hell you want to do with him. But like, if there's Josh, no reason for Josh Jacobs to sit out, it does nothing. It does nothing for him. Like, get that ten million and play, dude. Like, what are you gonna do? Sit around here and then then what? There's nothing you can do. It doesn't work. There's no, he has no leverage. Like, well, the leverage is is that if no Josh Jacobs, then no Josh McDaniels next year. Like, well, sure, but he's then, done because they if, have no chance. If there was any leverage there, it would already be a done deal. So Josh needs to pony up some of his own McDaniels money <laughs> to get Josh Jacobs there, so that he can be the right. coach the next year. Because otherwise, he's out. He's yeah, on hot seat. I, you know, I don't know if, right? if Josh, he's maybe he's got to be a little bit, but if, if they show some promise, it's warming up. It's definitely warm, warm ish. <laughs> uh, but if he shows some promise this year with what they got going on, you hope Devontae's all right. Um, and, he don't want to be there and play with, in this. And you got Jacoby. He's not into it. Um, and you know, if if they can be a, a pretty a much better, an improved defense from you know from last year which wasn't great which they got a lot of turnover like i said you know i think you could you could get mcdaniels one more year with you know new quarterback uh all, all that kind of jazz uh, and and the raiders they could be just straight up terrible with or without josh it just seems like um they're you know, probably gonna be bad regardless but probably they they, they, they do have a, a little bit narrative. of sleeper appeal tough division uh but yeah uh, so let's move it along. Let's go over to the other Sunday game. We'll go Chiefs Saints. Really, just want to talk about the the former Raider here in in Derek Carr. Thought he came out and looked sharp, look look charged up, looked pumped up. Um, was moving around out there um, after the game. He said, you know, he could get used to the Superdome. Super fun place to play. Maybe a little shot there. Uh, but six for eight, seventy yards and a touchdown. Uh, I, I thought that you know I really really liked what you saw. You saw. Him to Juwan Johnson two times. I believe one time was was for a first down there. The touchdown uh, went to Kirkwood. 
Uh, but you got you got a little Olave. You saw Mike Mike Thomas back out there. He caught a ball. He did um, not get hurt right after that. Or? Nope, he's Regular out there. Season, no. So you know, I, I know we've talked a little bit about these guys. We've we've done the uh, the breakdown of the Saints. They actually, we lost that one. So I don't know if that's seen the light of day. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, probably the the overall favorite to win this division. And you know, I think they I think they got a little juicier. If if Kamara only got three games. If Michael Thomas can be out there and and Jawan Johnson, who played you know a decent amount of snaps with the ones here, and and Carr was locked onto him and targeted him, targeted him in a, in a clutch situation, they they could have a little rapport that they could have kind of a sneaky fun offense here. And you know, Kendra might miss some time. We're not sure, but Jamal Williams is a nice little rest player for Kamara. Could get you through until he comes back. I wouldn't be surprised if Kareem Hunt maybe does now sign. Uh, with the Saints, we shall see. Uh, I thought A.T. Perry had a nice little showing out there. And I mean, I know he's a six round player, so there's no way it could ever, ever happen. But A.T. Perry, nice little guy on your taxi squad. But, you know, looked like he belonged out there. Mm-hmm. Didn't, didn't look um, Lost. uncomfortable. Caught a touchdown, reviewed. It was a touchdown. Kamara looked good and explosive. Um, so, like I said, I, I think there's uh, some, some fun uh, components to this team. They still have Taysom Hill. Um, who Taysom Hill <laughs> um, and, I, and I really like I, if Michael Thomas and, and um, Chris Olave can, can get out there and be out there together and, and between uh, Foster between Foster and, and Juwan and, and Jimmy Graham's back I mean let's go no uh-uh. um, yeah and Alvin Kamara I, I think you could have a, if the O-line can be solid uh, and I think the defense is always something that you're that the Saints pride themselves on, and Dennis uh, Allen being a you know tried and true, proud defensive coordinator, uh, I think odds are that they're probably going to win this division um, and and be a tough out first round of the playoffs. Uh, I think Falcons. I think, I think Carr a little bounce back. Um, you just have to. You have to. Yes, the Falcons would kind of be like the the good story, the dark horse to come in and be like, yeah, this is awesome, and I think they'll be hanging around, uh, but. I think Carr resurrected all up in your ass with the resurrection. Um, I think Carr feels good. I think they'll be all right. Um, I think they'll be kind of exciting at times. So, and then there'll be what games where it's Carr like, oh, it's Derek Carr again. In the Raiders. I don't know. Just didn't one feeling the love. They weren't feeling the love. They, I think they'd seen enough. Uh, so, it doesn't feel great with Carr. I feel like this, it could be just as surprising as them him being good as him being like. Benched. Well, it's not. It's not. Well, he's not going to get benched. He's he's good enough to not get benched. He's better than Jameis Winston, um, and I, they're they were they were a, a pretty solid team and a tough out last year with Andy Dalton at the helm. Like I just yeah. I feel like he's better than Andy Dalton. Sure, um, and I just he's not getting benched. He's he's a pretty good player. Is he their long long term solution for the next five years? I don't know. Maybe he retires a Saint and has a nice career, takes him to the playoff most seasons, but. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if you see a little bit of bounce back from where we saw Derek Carr from, you know, two years ago or whatever. So uh, didn't didn't mind what I saw from the Saints Chiefs. You know, it's the fucking Chiefs, man. Uh, Clyde Edwards, a in there right off the rip, catching some balls, looking spry. Um, Justin Ross caught a touchdown with the second team offense. Rasheed Rice was in there splitting some time. Sky Moore in there splitting some time. I, I don't think there's a, a ton to touch on on the uh on the Chiefs side of things, I think you need you need to get your uh, defensive tackle back there, uh, and and figure that out ASAP. Chris Jones, pay the man. Um, we'll keep it moving. We'll stay in the AFC West since we uh, we hit the Raiders or we hit the Raiders a little bit. We hit the uh, Chiefs. Let's go Chargers. A um, few things to talk about here. Uh, Quentin I, I, Johnston. Quentin Johnston. So you know the the the. Uh, Confirming confirmation bias, uh, you know. He can't catch. He can't catch because he, he dropped one. Um, Didn't he catch a touchdown after that? He did. Uh, and he, he, I want to hear more about the drop. The Well, that's because everybody who didn't like him, and this see, is what happens, see. they show they show the drop, and it's like, oh, he can't catch. And it's like. Who's a dead man that hit me with a salt shaker? I'm not sure if you've ever went out there and tried to catch a ball that was thrown like that and how where he would have had to spot that ball. Now. Should he catch the ball? A hundred percent he should catch the ball. He's a wide receiver. If he would have caught the ball, it would have been like, oh my God, that was such a fucking sick grab. He should have caught it. 
hands are on it, you should catch it. Um, but there was a little, there was some the tugging clapping. going on, and there was a little, a little. Uh, I think the defender didn't get as much credit as he should have on the play. He 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 made up some some speed and kept stride for stride with him for the most part. Um, it's a tough fucking catch, man. It's coming over the shoulder to the boundary out like this. It wasn't the easiest catch to make. Should he make it? Yes. Um, is that the end of the world for Quentin Johnston? No. Yes. We people will say how we're so offended by you know drops aren't a sticky stat, but now we're so offended by Quentin Johnston as if he can never get better at catching the ball. I've seen Matt Waldman just be on a tirade about fucking hand clapping and all this bullshit. It mostly That's doesn't, why Coral and Sutton's not any it good. It mostly doesn't matter for these guys. And I like Matt Waldman. He's been on the show a ton. Love Matt. Um, but, you know, I don't have Quentin Johnston. That's, something, that's a very easily fixable thing. What Quentin Johnston can do uh, was, you know, you saw him on a little over route where, you know, I think that's what Quentin Johnston can do. You saw him in the red zone there. Now, did he double catch that ball a little bit there at the end? Yeah, he certainly did. He needs to work on the hands a little bit. He's a rookie. He's going to be he has two great veterans on the outside and he's got Herbert to throw to him. He's got a great OC. They could scheme him up however they see fit. He's it. He was never the biggest, best downfield player. What I liked about him was the yak ability. Get the ball in his hands and let the big man move. That's what he did. That's what I liked about him. That's what blew my mind off. Uh, you know, I was like, holy shit. How's this man moving like this? Look at this guy. He's yeah. huge and he moves really, really well. Yeah. Um, was his contested catch the strongest thing in his repertoire? Absolutely not. Were the drops there? For sure. Uh, but you're, you're drafting on the raw skill and ability. I'm not putting any of these guys in buckets. He's 6'4", 215. He landed in a great spot. You already saw him with the ability to get open. We just need to convert on some of those things. And you saw him convert in the red zone. Nice little quick move uh, down there and a nice and a nice grab uh, to, to kind of, you know, recapture the hearts of the Quentin Johnston fans and didn't see as many of those uh, pulls by those of Matt Kelly and Josh Norris, the big pundits who don't like him uh, coming in. So confirming confirmation bias. So, you know, Jamison Williams had a drop. Everybody wanted to kill him. You know who else had a fucking drop in that game? Laporta. Didn't hear a fucking thing about it. You know who else had a drop? Jerry Judy. He's had a bunch of drops in his career. Didn't hear a fucking thing about it. It's so weird. So weird. Yeah. That I didn't hear anything about those. Like, you know, oh, well, trouble in paradise with Laporta. Didn't see that one fucking. I didn't even see a clip of Laporta. I had to go actually watch the fucking game to see that he dropped the ball. Like, it happens, man. He, he, he was dropping some in college, too. Yeah, but. It's like the one knock. He came in and, and dropped the ball. Well, when he does Again, catch it, wasn't the easiest catch. He played all the snaps with the first team. I know I'm jumping around a little bit here. We'll get back to the Chargers here. But I just was kind of going back to the point. We'll talk. Nobody about cares about the rest of the Chargers. Game. Quitting, that's it. Um, yeah, quitting. I wanted to hit on the running backs because I thought Isaiah Spiller and Josh Kelly, those guys are okay. battling for the for the two spot. I thought you yeah. saw some good stuff in the receiving game and the running game from Spiller. It was He was looking a little bursty. He had two called back that were really good runs. One was a touchdown, a long touchdown. Um and but but I also thought Josh Kelly looked good uh, as well. So those guys will kind of be duking it out a little bit. That's a situation to monitor. Deeper rosters uh, still holding out hope for our guy Spiller. Uh, we were high on him. Then after the draft, dropped him down into the mid second, and you know still still stuck with my guy. But was promising to see uh, what you saw on the field there. And then on the Ram side of things, uh, I think Puka Nakua. Um, which Puka. again, no way he could be good. Mm -mm. Shane Shane from uh, Dynasty Trades in Five already told you that there's no way he could be good. I know Scott Connor probably say, feels the same way. Shane said, put any filter on you want. Puka Nakua is not happening. Like, <laughs> I, good for you, man, for Just being so convicted. But for being so convicted. Because I hope he fucking, I hope all these guys that you guys say never could work out, work out. And Jesus Christ, it's just not, it's not what, isn't that why you started playing Dynasty to like, roster those guys and then to be able to hold like it's almost as good as a fucking trophy of like look at this i fucking got this guy and it's like For nothing nobody cares before any yuju mokes knew that he was right. going to be good and you know puka's got i don't wouldn't say he has no chance um I, I i would and it's like look do you want to bet on every outliner absolutely not you pick a few that you really like you do your due diligence you do your work and hopefully one of them a season can fucking pop off for you and you can get a value uptick are, are they going to be good for life maybe not most likely not but there is plenty of guys every year that you can get a value uptick on right and that's what we're trying to do 
at the very least. Right. Take a third, fourth round guy, turn look him into Mi- a two. Look at Michael Wilson right now. We did that industry mock. Half the people were like, not touching him. Other people were like, best pick you could have. If you took him in the fourth round right now, I bet you you could trade him for a third rounder right now. Just like that. Bang. He's getting hyped up. He was good in the game. He was their boundary receiver. Uh, you know, he's probably going to be out there. New regime. He's going to be out there on a lot of plays. Uh, you know, I, I think there was an immediate flip in there. And he's. I think the trajectory is just pointing straight up. So, you know, w- will he be good long term? I don't know. But if you drafted him in the fourth round, there's already flip potential in, in Michael Wilson before the season even fucking starts. Um, so uh, moving on from the Chargers. Um, let's go. Anthony Richardson. Let's go. Colts. Anthony Richardson. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, and, you know, there's certainly people that he's an outlier for uh, because uh, that completion yeah. percentage. No, I mean, he's an outlier because he's like, if you were to create a player on Madden, <laughs> you would put all the attributes except for, I don't know if experience is an attribute. All the other attributes are up at 99. Right. He he looks like a, a freak right. out there. And I only saw like a couple, like, I think I only might have got the first series. No, he threw a pick early. And then the next series, you know, he put a couple plays together. You can just see. Both from an arm talent standpoint and the legs, this dude is otherworldly. Yeah, you can and, see what's sexy, what right. the appeal Everything is. Everything that I've been wanting from him, I could see in like one drive. I'm like, oh yeah, that's that's right. That's and, who we, and the, the, that's who we're gambling on here, baby. The Let's INT go. was early on. He was kind of that's rolling a little bit, and he did that. He flicked it on a little underhand flick, and that's, it was like, but that that's all he's right. He's gonna make those mistakes. It's all Let's right, do it. Do it. It's all right. I could care less about. And then that he put a seed to fucking. Uh, Alec Pierce that he dropped, which also was a little bit of a tough catch. He should have caught it, uh, but dropped a dime in the bucket uh, for him, and it just didn't come up with it. And then he had a couple other nice passes, and then when he took off, he bodied up a fucking line. Yeah, maybe settle like, down. Probably on that. should, but, but look you know, at him. But right, and that, that's just two forty four. That's, that's kind of what it is. That's why we're hyped about this guy. Maybe he never turns into an awesome regular actual quarterback. He'll do for enough fantasy wise. I think he's gonna team. be just fine. Um, At the very least, you'll be able to get out from him if you don't personally like what you see. The value's going nowhere. And, and we like the landing spot. Steichen has, sure. has had Herbert, and he's mm-hmm. had Hurts. He was targeting Pittman. I liked it for Pittman. Got a little Pittman in there. Yeah, I, I thought I thought a notable. Uh, you know. Could hurt Josh Downs a little bit, but McKenzie was out there getting a little bit of work. He's a wily veteran, so he could he could maybe be splitting time with with Downs until maybe Downs gets fully acclimated. It's, it's no shot on Downs. I have no problem taking Downs uh, in any league, but McKenzie has come in and I think gives them you know a nice little veteran presence. So it's not rookie on rookie. Uh, your your three wides, you can get McKenzie in there and do some different things with him. And I thought he looked he looked pretty good. Uh, and he hasn't been able to stay healthy, but you know, I thought that was, that was a takeaway for me was, was McKenzie was like, ah, you know, deep roster, you know, may, maybe he, he could turn into something to be in the guy. If not flip him, see you later, uh, you know, burn him, see somebody else. Um, other than that, I thought, uh, the backup running back, uh, Deion, J- uh, Jackson, Jackson. Looked, looked pretty good. Um, Evan Hall got some carries, but. I think right now, as it stands, Jackson will be my favorite for the two. We'll see what happens when Moss comes back from the broken arm. He's going to miss most of the preseason uh, there. So, you worried about JT at all? I don't think so. I mean, he's he seems like he's 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 coming back around. Um, yeah, but he was in pads or something today. You know, I I don't I don't know. You know, what's so this is back at training camp? Like he wasn't there. Yeah, I, I saw plenty of videos where he was he was hanging around and and around the team a little bit. Um, it says that He's been away from the team. Basically, wants to play and is going to be around. Um, he says it was a little unclear of saying um, stance on wanting a trade has not changed. Uh, yeah, but what what is he supposed to do? It's just like the Josh Jacobs things we talked about. Like, I mean, what are you going to do? Sit out? It's not going to be. Like all every single running back in the whole league should sit out. They they that's the only every answer. single one of it's them. The only correct answer. We have an RB next to your name. You're on this text string. We're not showing up tomorrow. Everybody cool? It's the, RB skip right. day. Uh, no, all day. You gotta skip all year. You well, know, one well, day. Yeah, you you, do it starts with one day. We all skip one day. We've got we got their attention. Now who's he's, gonna bail? He's important to the team. I think he wants to be there. It's it's unfortunate that Ursay is a, a dipshit. If you can take and give 
JT and make him happy for three more years. He's what, 25 right now? 24? Four. Settle down. <laughs> like, you could get out of him by the time he's 27. The franchise tag next year is, I don't know what, but for the next two years, if you just gave him a little bit, two, two, two million more than what the franchise tag was, and then give him two or three more million this year, like two or three more million a year for the next three years for JT of what he could make on the franchise tag. And that, what is that? Like you can find that money, two or three million dollars a year if you need to. And you can and keep you JT happy. You got a rookie quarterback. The on team, a rookie contract. The whole locker room loves this guy. Right. He's an outstanding fucking human being. It's yeah, just, it's absolutely individual. ridiculous. Like I understand that running backs quote unquote don't matter. Most running backs don't matter, but some fucking do. Right. And Jonathan Taylor is one of those. John, Josh Jacobs is one of those. Saquon Barkley was one of those. They needed to get that guy back in there. They figured it out with the Giants, and Saquon wants to be there. So he said, fuck it, I'm coming in. Let's they do all want to be there. Right. Well, I mean, I'm sure Leonard Fournette doesn't want to be there. Well, we're not talking about Leonard Fournette trying to get paid right now. Either. They don't all want to be there, I, I don't think. Josh but Jacobs probably doesn't want to be there. Devontae yeah. Adams doesn't seem like he wants to be there. Josh like, Jacobs wants to be there. Like, I, I think there's, there, there's it's different personalities. It's different people. Like, you know, Austin Eckler, we know what that personality is like. He wants to be there. like with the Raiders, you know? Who wants to Nobody Yeah, wants I don't, to be with I don't, I don't think Raiders. Josh Jacobs cares. Like, he wants to trade now because they didn't pay him. But, like, you know, I just... And JT, who wants to be in Indianapolis? No offense to people in Indianapolis. I'm fine with being in Indianapolis. Like it's 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 a it's a good place to be and play. I'm sure. Like that's they got good fans. Ursay just stinks. Um, so, Bill side of things, you know, not not a ton to talk about for me. Um, didn't didn't really have any takeaways. Uh, Cook, James Cook looking good. Cook looked fine. Uh, he was on your uh, outside run. Most violent. Looked looked spry. Under no. Ex- uh, circum- under every circumstance, without context, Shakir must buy. Shakir had some good spots and a, and a big drop, which I guess is from reading about that has been kind of the stance of training camp. Has had some really big ups and some really big downs. Um, so, be interesting to see what happens there. Sherfield maybe going to be their their three uh, for the season, but we shall see. Our son Gabriel, uh, you know, line, lining him up for for a, a finally a big breakout this year. Uh, you know, I would Diggs. hold your breath. Stefan Diggs says so. So it must be true. All right, let's keep it moving. We could do Bears Titans real quick. Uh, I thought Tajay Spears looked really good or Tajay Spears. Um, yeah. Yeah. Tajay Spears, not Tajay Sharp. He's confused. R.I.P. Yeah. <laughs> he's, I, I think he's still alive. <laughs> Is he, well, he's not dead. But right. Um, in fantasy. Right. But I thought Spears looked really good. I, I don't I don't even know how he does it without an ACL. Must have them Lieutenant Dan <laughs> magic legs. Um, Got some good run on that tweet. Yeah, but uh, li- liked what I saw there. I actually liked what I saw from Malik Willis. Uh, I thought he he looked uh, good leaps and bounds better from kind of what you were seeing last year. Poised. Uh, little run from Levis there. Yeah, they were like, uh, we'll take Josh Dobbins with no experience <laughs> right. on our team whatsoever. But Malik getting the legs involved a little bit. He scored a rushing touchdown. I, I might have got called back. I'm not sure. But uh, good stuff there. Bears on the other side. Jesus, I have never seen so many people get so excited about two Screen screens pass. from just like, Bo, that doesn't. You see what it could be? That doesn't you show see? you at all what I see? need to see from Justin Fields. And one of those screen passes wasn't even a good pass. <laughs> like. <laughs> It's, and it's I'm not even trying to hate on Justin Fields like Herbert played all the snaps with the ones uh, and Roshan and uh, Foreman came in uh, a little later and, and they kind of rotated a little bit. Uh, so I don't know if that means anything per sure. se, but I Herbert, think it does in Herbert, this one instance. I think that does. I don't know that it does. I think he's, you know, the incumbent. And he's their veteran. Well, and so he's out there with them for their first offseason. It doesn't say as much as if like one of the other ones were a starter. I don't think he's going to. I don't think that means that he's getting 20 carries his game one. You know, uh, and none just going to be the guy. No. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't think it matters that much. But Herbert's a good player. I think he, he'll be fine. He'll have some games where he's good. I thought DJ Moore, you know, good for him. We know DJ Moore is good. It's, it's a matter of can the volume be better, good enough to be what it needs to be to sustain DJ Moore being better than what he has been the last couple of years, which has been good, not great. Uh, great for the situations that he's been in, uh, but, well, not, I think but not finally, great for what you what he could be. Right, but now he's so properly rated price-wise that 
he might be great for the return on what you are now paying for him. What you were having to give up before it was part of what made me so frustrated with him was that you were having to spend a premium. And it's now been, you get been coming down every year. Now you're getting decently cheap DJ Moore, and I'm like in. I'm getting like totally turned around. Like if y'all y'all should have listened to Big Co when we were, we had the show, and I was super mad at DJ Moore, and Big Co was like, "Well, if this is how Jay Wayne feels. I'm about to go send offers for DJ Moore." So hope you did that. Uh, I've been coming around since then, basically, and now I'm like, he's he's. I'm looking at him in redraft and startups when I'm in those middle rounds, those mid six through eight, whatever. I don't know exactly where he's going, but like I'm I'm he's a he's on my queue. I'm like, especially when the rest of the good ones have gone, right? Like Chris Godwin or DJ Moore. I don't, I don't know. Like I I, I like the Godwin I mean, the player uh, better, but the situation, you know. Yeah. Terry McLaurin or DJ Moore? The situation's like, terribly different. Although Baker was, you know, crushing some slot targets there, uh, I believe, in that game and didn't look terrible. Like he is, he's probably, they're probably not going to win a ton of games, but like I think he could facilitate enough that maybe the PPR upside's a little better for, for Godwin than what it is for um, DJ Moore. But yeah, I just think that DJ Moore hasn't had a ton to work with this point and has made pretty good with it. It just not great for what you paid, but now you're not paying the same premium and, and it could be pretty great returns. I mean, definitely going to help Justin Fields smash that over under for passing yards this season. And I mean, I like, I like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to watch that offense a little bit. Um, more goes ahead of Watson. How you feeling about that? We, we didn't talk about the, uh, the Packers game, but no, Watson we'll- was flashing a little bit. Would love so was. I'll hit a, dubs, I'll hit a couple more things here, and we'll get out of here. All right. Um, Cowboys, Coming around on DJ Moore, the moral of the story. Cowboys, DJ Jags, Moore, real quick. Um, obviously, they have a rookie tight end in uh, the Scoon Maker. Still not sure how to pronounce that. Is it Shoon Ferguson Scoon? was doing, but his Ferguson thing, looked like he potentially could be locked in as their two there. I didn't mean that as, as the number tight one end. tight end. Yeah. Um, there, Deuce Vaughn had a good game. Uh, but I, I'm, I don't know how. I think I'm probably Malik Davis or, or Rico Doddle or Bust here if I'm, if I'm ba- taking a backup. Tank had a fine game. Um, you know, I, I'm not as. I know people just love to hate on ETN. Uh, so. Hey, go buy the dip on ETN right now. You want to buy the dip on somebody? Yep. ETN. I never had a fifth round rookie impact a, 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 a third, an elite third round rookie level talent so much. I feel like tanks really tanked the, the yeah ETN it, it, stock. People people already hated ETN. I, he doesn't even need Peterson, that much. Peterson already I, I, saying that they didn't want to give that. That that's you already fine. knew coming in that that this is what what it was going to be. ETN's explosive and right. he he can be efficient. He's right. a good receiving back. Trevor likes him. He is a threat to house it from anywhere. And looking back at the game log from last year, he got they started him off very slowly, which was smart of them because he's coming off of a devastating injury. And the major takeaway is that, he, that he's still good on off that. Right. He didn't look like he lost any explosion, still moving the same way, still no. still electric. And he's only going to get better. He's going to have worked to improve his whole entire game this offseason. Everything's going to be better there. They got more weapons on the outside. Right. Trevor's going to take a step forward. It's just everything's pointing up for this offense. You're hoping and the Trevor's taking a step forward. You're hoping the whole offense takes a step I forward. I mean, how can, how can you not? You saw the progression throughout the year. It, it got so much better from like start right. to finish on that team. And right, but you don't know. Now you got Calvin Ridley in there, second year in the system. You get the can't two more years, another year removed from the cancer that is Urban Meyer. I just I'm excited about the Jags. And yeah, I think how I can think you not be excited about ETN for and, good reason? Well, a lot of people aren't. I know. Um, I'm so, I'm saying that they're wrong. You know, and, and you I'm know, super I think, excited about him. You know, you had Dwayne McFarland, who I think has perennially pretty much been an ETN hater. So it's it's right on brand um, of just you know. Oh, you saw short yardage and valuable touches already. It was like one time that it happened in a fucking preseason game. Um, and Dwayne does great work. Not hating on Dwayne, but like, again, I think it's a little bit of confirmation bias. I feel like I remember, la- I don't listen to a ton of it, but I could remember last year, I think he wasn't the biggest ET fan to begin with. And look, yeah, ET may lose some short yardage. They weren't very good in short yardage uh, situations last year. Near, he had near five the end fumbles. Of the, near the end of the... Uh, 28th or so in, in short yardage and, and goal line stuff. But uh, I was reading the thread that they were him and Josh Norris, I think we're having. And it's like, I think some of that has to go on your O line, not being very good either. When you get into those situations, 
Um, E.T. was basically a rookie last year, too. Um, and again, we were talking about the good ass dude club. E.T.'s in the good ass dude club and is going to work. He's he's kind of the opposite of of uh, the Shethades of of the NFL who don't want to work and who are going to sit on their laurels and rest on their talents. Uh, E.T. is going to continue to improve every year, mm -hmm. just like he improved his receiving in college. I know that's some, why some people don't like him because his receiving isn't great. I think he can continue to improve on that. That's something that he's been working on for a long time, and maybe we see a better jump this year. If he wouldn't have dropped that touchdown pass, it would be a completely different narrative <laughs> so, around him. I, I still like Tank a good bit. Tank's my guy, but I'm, I'm, I'm not – Tank's not taking the job from ETN, and the, yes, he may lose some valuable touches here and there, but so is most of the running backs in the league are right. going to lose some valuable touches here right. and there. Let's hit the Packers real quick. I thought Jordan Love uh, had some good poise uh, at times in that game, had, had an interception. but Started off a little rocky, but then settled uh, in. Moved around the, the ball to Watson, maybe a little bit too much air on it, but everybody's a fucking critic. Like, you know, it, w it was the right spot and the right throw. Like, yeah, maybe should have just put a little less air so the safety couldn't get under it quite as much, but fine with it. The, the, the connection to Dubs was, was back and ready to roll. Uh, you saw a, a few good grabs from him and the TD. Um is Jordan Love going to succeed this year? I'm not sure, but uh, I, I was hopeful with what you saw there. Um, it looks like a pretty quarterback friendly offense. I mean, right, and and the, the, it's going to be friendly, and you know, you got a good we, running game. Running we started backs. the preseason talk with with the little Trey Lance, and I think this situation's a little different. He hadn't had a guy like Aaron Rodgers in front of him, kind of show like. Trey Lance has kind of been on his own. Uh, Love to, looked like he was making quick decisions. You know, right. he was getting the ball out where it needed to go. He, was he hadn't thrown been it to Aaron seeing Jones. somebody operate the system how it sh you know should potential or at least part of the system. I'm sure. I mean, Trey more. had had seven weeks of Brock Purdy. What else do you need? <laughs> right, uh, and you know, and Jimmy. I'm not going to hate on Jimmy. He's a professional, but he's not Aaron Rodgers. Uh, but. I don't know if Handsome, Love will be though. good or not, but the situation around him is really good. The offensive line's good. And the then Mus Musgraves, another big takeaway. I wasn't sure how that was going to go, but all the snaps with the first team, do, does that mean anything? Again, I'm not sure. For sure. But super athletic. Especially with them playing Watson and Dubs right. and Love and Aaron Jones was out there. like Right. And I thought A.J. Dillon looked, looked mean uh, on his couple of carries there. So I really liked what you saw from the Packers side of things. Bengals, not much to talk about on that except for uh, Chris Evans, uh, I think, is – locked up the RB2 spot for there right now. Uh, we'll see how that develops, but he looked he looked good uh, in his run there. Anything else you want to hit on before we get out of here? Um, I thought Hal and Dotson had a nice little connection. Dotson reminding you of kind of what was going on there. I thought uh, the, the tight end, uh, the third tight end for the commanders had uh, a nice a nice game there. Uh, I'm trying to grab that name for you real quick. Cole Turner uh, had a nice game, four for 31. Uh, and you saw, um, you know, I don't know if, if it has anything to do with, with what they were doing on offense and because of who's the OC there now, the enemy coming from there. But I, I talked about a little bit in the tight end rankings that Logan Thomas was pretty much free. Uh, and then Bates is pretty much free. Um, but the tight end had a nice little role here. Cole Turner looked pretty good. Uh, deep, deep stash there. Um, and then, you know, I think Logan Thomas might have a decent role in this offense because you're coming from an offense that was run with a really good tight end um, and kind of knowing how to scheme that up. But Dotson doing Dotson like things out there. Um, Gibson and Brian Robinson both looked fine. I think that you kind of saw what that's going to be uh, a bit of a of a split up. And, and whoever has the, the big play or the TD that week is probably going to be the the commander that you wanted to start in the running back position. Probably the last thing for me. I'm just going to give George Pickens a little love since all off season everyone wanted to hate on him. I thought Kenny Pickett looked really good in his debut there. Deontay Johnson looked good. Um, uh, on a report coming from uh, Cody Carpenter or whatever the hell his name is, formerly at Roto World at Roster Watch, been at camp basically saying everybody needs to pump the fucking brakes. It's Najee. It's going to be Najee. You can Jalen's going to probably work in, but from from what was going on in camp, it's going to be Najee. And I'm, we've been trying to tell you, it's going to be Najee. I think Warren's good, but it's going to be Najee. But I thought Pickett to Pickens, uh, very, very solid there. Uh, yes, did he have awesome separation? No, but he had enough separation. And Pickett put it right where it needed to be, and then Pickens ran the fuck away from everybody else. Like, I think we just get so caught up in some of this advanced analytics and reception perception, which is great. And all of this can tell a really, really good story. Uh, and, and help, you know, get rid of and, and detract from from 
picking the wrong guys and and you know but all of them aren't the same and they don't fit into the same buckets george pickens you know maybe he won't be awesome maybe he will just be Devonte parker but Devonte parker for a minute there if he could have stayed healthy was a pretty prized possession there for a little bit um and, and just you know battled health for most of his career but i think pickens has got more juice than Devonte parker uh, I'm, I'm really excited about Kenny Pickens coming into this season. I think he's this year's Daniel Jones. Kenny Pickett. Kenny Pickett coming into this season. And I, I think George Pickens is going to shut a lot of people up this season. I hope so. Um, and yes, is he a separation king? Is he Tank Dell uh, coming out of college? Oh, nice. Is he Jalen Waddell? Is he, Speaking of Tank Dell. Is he Tyree Kill? No, he's not any of those guys. He's a big bodied guy who only needs a little bit of separation. He can be kind of the separation uh, and if Pickett can put the ball where it's supposed to be, Pickens and Pickett connection is going to be fantastic all season long. And he's awesome in the red zone. Um, and and I just, I really, 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 really want Pickett want to, zig Pickett zig zig ah. to smash this year just so people can shut the fuck up about separation. Like, yeah. man, all receivers are not created the same, man. Yeah. Like, it's it's all right. He's got something. Like, he's high, he's got the highlight he plays, but there's some more he's to got- him it right there's some more to him there Allen robinson was was a very good receiver uh who's was kind of in that vein brandon as well. marshall brandon marshall um there's not a lot of separation speed, in the world in the, you in know, the nfl so you know I, I i know you know some people aren't gonna like that but you know i'm i'm i haven't been crushing pickings in a ton of drafts uh but i certainly haven't traded my pickings away um yeah for anything so uh let's go kenny pickett to pickings Sure. Steelers coming in second in the division. Okay. Getting the playoff spot. Good division. Strong division. Terrible in-division rivalries to watch for fantasy football scoring. I got a couple little uh, other notes here, just some notes I made from watching some games. Your boy Watson running around. That's what we need to see. If Watson is going to run, he's going to be back into an elite performing uh, quarterback from that position. They are loaded with talent and they have a good offensive line. Dude, I what? loved what I saw from Deshaun Watson. DTR needs to be the backup. Kellen Mond, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, that's not even real. Uh, Kellen Mond sucks. Uh, DTR flashed, showed some good stuff. Uh, You're not going to win with Kellen Mond if, if Watson goes down, so no, you might as well just no. let DTR play. Yeah. DTR. Deshaun, DTR. Deshaun in that offense looks like must watch TV. They didn't even have they didn't have Chubb yeah. out there, obviously, but they just there's a lot of times where they spread it out and they just meticulously worked their way down the field. And yeah. when Deshaun needed to take off when it was when it presented himself, he was willing to do so. And too much so in a preseason game. Stop Deshaun. You don't need that first down. Fuck yeah. out of here. But then like then like on the next play, they call it, a designed run. I think it was good for him. Sure. Just get that going. And they got all the way down to the goal line. And then I think tried like three times to get in, just giving it to Felton no, or whatever. No and Chubb, no right, four. Right. So I felt was practically all right, a score right But there, I like the way that uh, Elijah, Elijah Moore was Moore, being yeah, used. Yeah, in, out of the backfield on and handoffs. And they kind of and, alluded to that. If he could just be healthy. Man, I, you what know. a sick. You get, Amari wasn't out there that particular game, I don't think. And you got and Joku was. Just a, just weapons everywhere. Yeah. Tillman was getting involved. Like That's a fun offense. I think it's a. We've been high on Watson, and it looked justifiably so watching the preseason. A couple little notes here. Uh, Jaleel McLaughlin, a cheap RB pickup probably on waivers right now. He, he could get some run with the Broncos. He looked pretty good in that preseason game. Uh, Tyquan Thornton was flashing for the Patriots. A little he, bit. Looked, he looked bigger than I recall him ever being. So <clears throat> he was on one of our pre – Early off season buys, uh, I, I liked what I saw from him. Just in, he made an, went up, made a nice play. Tank Dell obviously had the big splash uh, after Stroud kind of went out. Um, Stroud got beat up by that Pat's D line. Not time. Can't can't nothing to say about Stroud at this point. But yeah. Anyways, I think that uh, that should do it, man. We we hit an hour. Yeah. Cru- cru- Okay, get the FF out of here. Jamison getting crushed uh, a little bit, but people, it's already preconce- preconceived hate right there. Just keep letting them hate. Uh, Buy the dip. Saw him on a lot of must sells lists already. Love it. Like, t- Love again, it. I hope my he teammates hasn't are reading fucking that. Fucking played. Shit. Right. What is happening? Please let me go by. What this, is man. happening? Why? He dropped a couple balls? Like, yeah. okay, cool. I don't understand what's happening here. Um, well, I don't, I don't, I don't, want, I don't want guys who be can be freakishly. Well. Athletic and just blow the doors off of pretty much anybody guarding them. Trying to guard them. 90% of the time. I don't want that guy. Mm -mm. Um, 
Didn't you know he was gambling on the hotel? Right. And then, from? you know, didn't you know his rookie season? If the people who don't put up Routes this amount of production through run. their rookie season, they're stop it. You're doing too much. You're doing too much. He didn't play. And you're not doing and enough. He's playing well into the third quarter of the preseason. They fucking said he was going to. He's like, not going to play for six right. weeks. He didn't play last idiots. preseason. He barely played last right. season. He should be out there. Idiots. Let him play. Um, two quick running backs. Keep your eye on. Super cheap. Maybe they make the team. Maybe they don't. Elijah Dotson for the Chargers had a couple of big runs. And Emmanuel Wilson for the Packers uh, just had some explosive plays there. So just keep your eyes on them. Probably nothing. Uh, but could be fun. So appreciate you. We'll get out of here. Like, subscribe. Five-star review on the podcast. Head over to Patreon.com. Got some top 24 rankings about to drop there. We're going to go do some more ranking shows over just on the Patreons. Team reviews. Discord. <laughs> Help your boy, hook your boys out, uh, hook your boys out, hook your boys up, help your boys out. Mm-hmm. $5 holla, three shows a month, all kind of fun stuff. We appreciate y'all for joining us. Leave us a comment down below. You know the drill. Appreciate y'all. Peace.